about eight, nine, ten years ago, we started looking at how the athlete was coming to us, uh, what society was doing with him, and because of that, we, we kind of flipped the script. Um, now what we do is we have a, a day set aside every week. It's called either Motivational Mondays or Wisdom Wednesdays. We spend one hour uh, with our players working on them. The biggest problem I find today is society is lying to them, uh, is changing uh, how they see things, and we as coaches have to try to put things back into perspective for them. I think they've been given a bad playbook. I think the millennials aren't bad kids. I think they've been given a bad playbook. And I think it's our job as coaches to get that playbook out of their hands and get a better playbook back in their hands because society is lying to them. Uh, not only is society lying to them, but some of their parents are lying to them. And so that's making it more and more difficult for teachers and coaches today simply because they're coming to us with a bad playbook. But I don't think it's their fault. I think old school coaches have a hard time right now in, in dealing with where we're at today because they can sometimes hate the kid, hate the parent. I don't always believe the kids are bad. I just think somebody's giving them a bad playbook. If our football coach gives our quarterback a bad playbook and he really suffers uh, on, on a weekend football game, I don't think we can hate the kid. He's been given a bad playbook. So what we try to do is we try to give him the bad playbook. Our truth has been taken out of school. We've taken Christ out of school. We're fearful to mention his name today. You see, I, I'm, we're too worried about who we're going to offend today <coughs> instead of worried about who we're going to inspire today. See, somebody's destiny is hooked to you. And the more you sit down, the more you're scared to mention Christ's name, because that's our problem today is we sit down. We sit down at the town hall meeting. We sit because it's safe. We don't want to stand up anymore. Because of that, a lot of our kids can't stand up. I know you're having a hard time finding leaders, finding the leaders. They don't want to stand up. They don't know how to stand up. So I challenge you as coaches today not to go silent like we have. You see, we tell our players all the time they go read the Bible. In there, it doesn't say they got to be a baseball player. But it's explicit in there on what kind of man they need to become. Crystal clear. We ask our players to go home the first day and ask their mom and dad to talk to them about how the curveball is slide or self their marriage. Baseball's going to play a very small role in their life. But making them a man plays a huge role in their life. You see, their sport will never get them in trouble. Next time you see somebody in trouble in athletics, look at the highlight. The sport didn't get him in trouble. It never does. What gets them in trouble is the decisions they make as men. This gets us in trouble. It will keep us in trouble. Their sport has nothing to do with their trouble. But an athlete punches his wife in the elevator, when the athlete puts his hands on his wife, whatever he does, next time some athlete's in trouble, you read the headlines. It will not be a sport that got him in trouble. What got him in trouble is the decisions he made as a man. That's what gets him in trouble. And that's what keeps him in trouble. But yet every whacked out parent today has their seven year old, a running coach, a hitting coach, a throwing coach, a fielding coach, They've got him loaded down with every coach they think he needs by the time he's eight years old. Some of them paying $100 an hour for tutoring. When yet, his sport will never get him in trouble. It will never get him in trouble. What's going to get him in trouble is who he is as a man. This is what gets us in trouble. This is what will get every one of your players in trouble. And it will keep us in trouble. But yet, that whacked out parent has got him every coach they think he needs. The hitting coach, the running coach, the throwing coach, the fielding coach. But they will not put a dollar, one dollar into a life coach. One dollar. We'd have way more people here today if we were talking about how to pitch, how to throw, how to run, how to hit. We'd have a lot more people here today. One of us as coaches threw a leadership camp on my campus for two days.
days, I'll probably have one guy and a dog show up. <laughs> right? We, we put out there that we're going to teach somebody how to throw 94 by Monday. They'll be lined up at the back door, whacked out dad with his money and everything, ready to go. Right? <laughs> And that's our problem today. You know, we laugh about it, but it's, it's a shame. It's really a shame on where we're at. But let, let, let's move forward. Here's what up the premise of these seven lies. This is 31 years as a head coach. This is not something I read in the book. This is something I've seen over my 31 years. I want to start with God gives us two gifts. He gives all of us two gifts in our life. The first gift he gives us is a universal gift. We all have it. I have it. You have it. it. It's the gift to just make a difference in somebody's life, to hold the door open, to say, how are you doing today? To pick up the phone and call somebody when you know his dad died, when you watch your brother die, and your mom die, and you know how that feels. If you reach out to somebody, and you open that door. See, it doesn't take any degree or any experience to open up the door for somebody. That's a universal gift. We all have it. That gift does not get us in trouble in our life. Here's the second gift that God gives us that gets us in trouble in our life. It's called a unique gift. The gift I have, Butch doesn't have it. The gift I have, Lane doesn't have it. The gift Lane and Butch have, I don't have. We have to dig deep and find out what is our unique gift. What's that second gift that God's given us? The reason this gift gets us in trouble is because it brings money. It can bring fame. Maybe the ability to speak. Maybe the ability to coach. Maybe you become the, the, the world's greatest lawyer. I don't know what your, your unique gift is, but God gave that to you to live an abundant life. So you can make money off of it, fame can come off of it, glory can come off of it. There's a lot of things that can come off that unique gift. That unique gift will get us in trouble if we don't know how to manage that unique gift. And so what I'm going to show you today is what happens to great coaches that get in trouble, you greatest players that get in trouble, even people in society, movie stars, actors, all of this follows any profession. But these are the seven lies that I've seen that happen in athletics when some kid has a unique gift and he's your star pitcher, or maybe he's a star player in junior high. Whatever the case may be, you can start to see some of these seven lies starting to show up. When you go back to work Monday, I can sit in the hallway at a junior high and I can show you a kid in which one of these lies he's already in. Just by watching his demeanor, watching how he treats people in the hallway, I can already tell what the seven lies or what lie he's living out. Because sport lies to us seven times if we're not careful. And so I'd like to show you those today. Lie number one, it can link our identity to a game. The worst thing you ever want to do is link your identity to a game. You can let your fans do it, your boosters do it, but once you link your identity to a game, you're going to be in some serious trouble because when the game leaves you, your identity is going to leave you. See, a baseball coach is what I do. It's not who I am. You might think you know me, but you probably don't because you know me as a baseball coach. That's what I do. It's not who I am. It gets movie stars and actors, successful coaches, successful players in trouble in life is this lie number one. They hook their identity to a game. You should never hook your identity to something that's fleeting. You should never hook your identity to something that's going to leave you. Jesus Christ will never leave you. But we don't hook our identity to him. We hook our identity to, oh man, he's got a thousand wins, or he's been to Omaha, he's been this, he's been that. I don't need all that to validate me, because that's not who I am. Baseball coach is what I do, it's not who I am. The game will leave us. Remember this, your wife married you, not the game. My wife, Colleen, married me. She didn't marry the game. She stuck to the game, but she didn't marry the game. Right? And this is why athletes beat their wives, in my opinion. 
is because once your wife sees you married to an identity, instead of her, she starts to chip away at it. And man, when you chip away at a man's identity, he wants to beat his wife over it. He, he wants to defend himself over it because he thinks that's who he is. And I think this is why guys, especially sports and successful people, have a difficult time. It's because they link what they do to who they are. I think that's why we lose a lot of movie stars. I think that's why we lose a lot of successful people in this country. It's because what they do becomes who they are. And I think that's a dangerous place to be in your life. And I challenge you not to let your best player start to link his identity to a game, man. He's going to have a very hard time in life. See, one day I tell our players all the time we're going to have to face the Lord. When they face him, I don't think he's going to have a, a radar gun when they get there. I don't think he's going to have a stalker sitting over here and go, here, Johnny, you know, throw right here. See how hard you throw. You can get in here if you throw 94, 95. But every whacked out parent already has him, what, at seven years old. Throw a coach, hitting coach, fielding coach. Man, that stuff is going to get us in. You can't throw your way into heaven. You can't. You just can't. I don't think he's going to have a stopwatch and two traffic cones up. He's going to time you in the 60 to see if you can get in. But every whacked out parent today in select baseball, which is a bad model, it's a fractured model. I don't have enough time to beat it up. But it's just